This is a video for OCR Pure Core Mathematics. Second Order Differential Equations 3, Modeling with Second Order Differential Equations. 3.3, Damped Oscillations, Plotting and Interpreting Solutions. In a previous video, we've looked at this type of differential equation and seen that it produces a damped oscillation as a solution. This differential equation is really the SHM equation with an acceleration proportional to the displacement and directed back towards the center with an additional component which is proportional to the velocity and this additional component is a braking force which dampens the motion down. The auxiliary equation for this differential equation is lambda squared plus k lambda plus omega squared equals naught. And depending on the discriminant for that quadratic, k squared minus 4 omega squared, we will get different types of solution. Let's have a look at some of those different types then. In this situation here, a special situation, I've got k equals naught. And if k equals naught, then this bit disappears. So I get no damping. And in fact, what I've got is I've just got simple harmonic motion and I get a sine type curve which continues at the same amplitude. In this situation, I've got k equals 2, omega equals 5. And if I look at the discriminant, k squared minus 4 omega squared, I'm going to get 4 minus 100, which is clearly less than 0. And in this situation, I will get complex roots to my auxiliary equation and therefore get oscillations which dampen down over time. This is known as underdamping because you get oscillations that gradually decay. So in this situation, if I look at the discriminant, I'm going to get 676 minus 100 which is clearly greater than naught, and therefore here I'm going to get two distinct real roots to the auxiliary equation. And the effect of this is to have what's known as overdamping, where there are no oscillations and the motion decays over time. And in the final situation I've got k is 10 and omega is 5, so I get 100 minus 100 is equal to 0. And that means that my auxiliary equation will have a repeated real root. And if we look at the effect on the solution, I will get no oscillations and again a decaying over time. This is known as critical damping. It's actually very difficult to distinguish between these two situations physically because there are no oscillations Critical damping is therefore the borderline between underdamping and overdamping. So in summary then, if we've got this differential equation, we'll get this auxiliary equation. If you think about the solutions of that auxiliary equation, we're going to get that lambda is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now if a, b and c are all positive you can see I'm always going to get a minus b over 2a bit to this and then plus or minus whatever the discriminant comes out to be So I'm always going to get some kind of e to the minus some constant t. So I'm always going to get damping, decay, as t tends to infinity. The degree of damping depends on the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. And there are three possibilities for this. Either the discriminant is less than naught, in which case it's underdamped and there will be oscillations before it finally decays or b squared minus 4ac is equal to naught, in which case we say it's critically damped, 
the borderline between this and this situation in which b squared minus 4ac is greater than naught and it's overdamped. There's no oscillation and the motion decays over time. The next video in this sequence is 3.4 solving simultaneous differential equations.